can you tell I love to dance? But you're right, this is not the kind of show. <laughs> Let's get serious. Hey friends, welcome to the Digital Diplomat Podcast. I'm W.E. DeCruz, and on here, you learn how to impact locally and build globally. I'm super excited about this next interview with founder Rita of Corporate Black Girl 101. She's been helping women here in the U.S. and in Africa navigate the workforce. She's been building human capacity so that women can have a chance in their field. Listen, oftentimes these stories start from pain, but she's learned to take her pain to purpose. She's using digital technology to engage and to grow. Let's take a listen. Awesome. Well, welcome, Rita. Welcome to the Digital Diplomat Podcast. I'm so excited to host you today. I know on this podcast, we talk all things impact locally and build globally. And so we want to know about what you've been doing at Corporate Black Girl One-on-One to impact the lives of so many people. Welcome, Rita. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, It's always a pleasure being given the opportunity to share my message, my journey, and just inspire and motivate others. So super excited to be interviewed today. Oh, you're most welcome. So tell us, give us, a, you know, give us the history. How did you get to where you are today uh, for us sitting here interviewing and talking about corporate Black Girl 101? Tell us the journey. Oh, man. You know it's been is, a journey. This is great. <laughs> um, so for me, I'll, I'll try to make it as quick as possible. Um, so when I was in high school, I was always that um, individual that just knew how to be strategic in terms of like landing a role or getting an internship. Um, so fortunately, um, I was able to expand on that on, the, on that skill set by becoming an intern with them. The, there was a program called um, National Student Partnership, but it's now mm-hmm. called LIFT. And basically, one of my duties was to work with Fordham University um, and help them, uh, you know, find individuals in the Bronx, South Bronx of New York jobs. And so (laughs) this is when, like I said, Monster was like the most popular engine at that time. And I basically would work with a lot of Hispanics and um, Black individuals in South Bronx, Fordham Road area, and work with them to get jobs, find different job opportunities. So as time went on, I realized that people would come to me, hey, can you help me do do this, do that? And Mm. I was really good at that. But things were taking to another level when I got my first job. my first corporate job, I will not say the place. Um, (laughs) And I experienced some serious discrimination. And so for for just to get an idea of my background, I spent eight years working in the hospital um, where I held workshops. Um, I wanted to be a medical doctor at that time. So I was an intern. And so the hospital environment is very different from the corporate environment. It's just very different. So when I stepped into a corporate environment, I I was already thrown off because yes, I'm the only black woman there on my team. This was something I had to adjust to, Um, but things got really bad when they asked me in the bathroom, how did I get the job? Um, When my Mm. boss made a box cutter joke um, because I'm from the Bronx in New York. And so she was like, oh, we were packing box cutters, you know, for one of our um, events. And she was just like, um, something about, um, oh, I know they, they use box cutters in the Bronx. It was so, oh my gosh. And um, mm. I was also recommended for that job by one of the, I think it was one of the board of directors. It was a surgeon. And so they asked me how I knew him. Like all these inappropriate questions were being asked. And it's like, well, how, how did you get the job, right? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> so it was, it was, I mean, but also imagine me being 23, never experienced in this. How do you react? Like I hated that place. I would go to church every lunch break um, because there was like a Catholic Mm. church and I would pray. I remember all the gospel songs I listened to at that time. Mm. It was so bad um, and it was very traumatizing, which is something I discuss now um, on my social media pages. Work trauma, career Mm. trauma, it's real. Mm. So um, within two months, um, basically something went down where a colleague who kind of oversaw, like was kind of like a supervisor said that um, uh, I did something that I didn't do. So I was just like, you never asked me to do it. She never did. And then she said, Rita, you're getting loud. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, that's one thing I know is not to get crazy. And, uh, yeah, and for I, sure. It was just so condescending. And within like a week or two, 
um, after being used, because I know I know that's how they planned it. They made me work a symposium. And then afterwards, they sat me down in the office and they, they said, Rita, you're just not a great fit. And I remember she did her hands just like that. And so they let letting me go. And I was like, why are you letting me go? I asked. She was like, you're just not a great fit. Mm. that's why you're letting me go so they brought the vp of uh hr or something like that in there and i asked her i said why are they letting me go like why are they i i i wanted a reason and there yeah. was no reason so after that experience um you can only imagine you get a job you get a corporate you, you just feel like wow um yeah. especially when you're someone that's an overachiever and um you no longer have a, a job. And I was on my own, you know, I was paying rent at that time. I was helping my mom out. Um, she didn't live with me, uh, but she was sick, you know? Yeah. And so I would help her with like her utility bills and things of that nature. And so I felt like a complete failure at that time. Um, and so shout out to my mom, she, she's passed, but rest in peace mm -hmm. because she called me and she poured into me. I felt like I'm like, I'm supposed to be like doing big things at this point. And she just, kind of like she she instilled that like she laid that foundation of faith within me and so mm -hmm. reminded me that's right like whose child are you like you remember who mm -hmm. your father is and that reminder took me to another level because I began to meditate again I was reading the word of God I was studying I was like you know what I'm gonna do this and so I started breaking on um, my resume writing skills my packaging skills like I became a really good over within the span of like eight months yeah and so I actually got a couple of interviews it was a lot of interviews I got rejected from all of them <laughs> but the, the <laughs> dream job that I wanted it was a yeah. clinical research role actually um happened for me and so for me to go from a, a a health nonprofit to a clinical research role took some major career transitioning skills because I purposely crafted myself so, so when that yeah. was done I was like, okay, look at me, like, wow, right? Um, and I mean, I, I sped through that time, but it was quite traumatic. I definitely hit depression, but look, I feel like that situation happened for a reason, right? Because yeah. the next few years, I got this shaking in my spirit. It was unbearable. It was uncontrollable. I hated it. This was in 2016. And I felt like I had to move, like there was a ministry mm. Um, I have a lot of mentees in New York. I have a lot of mentees here in, in the DMV. I have a lot of mentees in Nigeria. And so there's always something about women. I was like, I don't want to be a woman empowerment, anything. I just want to be like a medical doctor or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I just said, you know what? Let me pack my bags and move. So I actually turned down a promotion at NYU. Um, I was, you know, my boss asked me, you know, we want to give you this role. And I said, no, he looked at me like I was crazy. He said, why? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm moving. He said, to where? I was like, the DMV. He's like, when are you moving? I'm like, I don't know, but I'm moving. <laughs> I, like, it, it was me literally working by faith. Working by faith. Just, there was a mission. I mean, I think that's when God, like, I've never experienced that before. It was like a, a shift, right? Both figuratively and literally, right? Yeah. And so um, I found a job. Um, moved in with a random roommate who, who is now like one of my closest friends now. Yeah. Um, because I found her on Craigslist. Like, talk about wow. my life. Um, threw my clothes in a garbage bags and drove down to the DM. Yeah. To, to, yeah. To and um, corporate black girl one on one. I sat. I stood in my my apartment for was it three months? Created the website. Created a business plan. Um, just kept dreaming. My roommate thought I was like, she's like, do you have friends? I actually do have a lot of friends, but she didn't understand that I was grinding at that moment. And yeah. New York was also a distraction. So for me to be in a new place where I don't know anyone gave me the opportunity to zoom in. And let me just tell you, the minute I finally published the website and everything, let's just say I held a workshop in um, New York City at NYU. I held a corporate black one workshop in uh, DC. Um, my partner and I have Ladies Talking Tech. We did a, a event in DC. We did one sponsored by Verizon in New York City. We also, I also had a Verizon talk within one year of being here, Verizon sponsored wow. that I was able to give. Um, it, it was like, I um, had a Verizon sponsored brunch. 
um, oh, where amazing. I use it as an opportunity to bring different, different, you know, the DMV can be a little clicky sometimes. And I'm just like, you know what, it's important. As, to is, bring- as is many cities and many as locations is, as that have communities. As is- as a many countries, as a yes. many tribes. Um, yes. And I just saw it as I'm, I'm always, I've always been that person that's like a middle person. So I've never just been with a click. So I'm like, let me bring people out. It was like a very secret VIP kind of thing, invite only. Um, and um, just been sitting on panels and just doing that. But in the midst of that, I go to Nigeria frequently. My family's yeah. based there. I was so, going to. I was going to interrupt and say, well, let's let's, let's set the context a little bit more about (laughs) being a Nigerian American. So were you born in Nigeria, born here, raised in Nigeria? Let's set that context so that we can really get the world of navigating corporate life and starting this organization to help others within the diaspora, you know, to, 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 to prosper in it. Exactly. So going to Nigeria, um, you realize that the issues Black women women deal with there are slightly different from the issues black women deal with hair it's still issues but it's more of a not just the women men is in Nigeria as well it's um elitism is gender discrimination for women um nepotism is real like it's really like who you know what you you know even when you go to like conferences or things of that nature very relational very mm-hmm. relational what are you wearing what's you know you're looked at up and down from shoes to it's just very clickish and and opportunities are typically, even though people may not attend to, may not intend to be this way in Nigeria, um, but opportunities can seem recycled amongst the same type of woman. Um, and this is not an assumption I'm making. This is because I speak with people out there. Um, mm-hmm. I also see things. Um, you know, I have friends out there as well. And I decided, you know what, I'm holding workshops in America. Um, let me hold workshops in Nigeria. So I remember it was like two weeks, like a week before or two weeks before I was going to Nigeria. And I just decided to like create this flyer on Canva. And I was just mm-hmm. like, I'm going to be in Nigeria. Who's going to be out here? And I uh, was it like 13, 14. I don't know. I have it on my social media pages. Mm-hmm. A bunch of women came out. Um, I had it at Crystal Court at Lucky Hotel in Lagos, Nigeria. And that's where Corporate Nija Girl 101 started. Mm-hmm. And so... What I would do is, and what I would do is hold workshops every time I come to Nigeria, or I would hold um, webinars for them. Um, sometimes even, I think a few months ago was my last webinar. And it's hard sometimes because you're in America and there's a time difference. So I would be at 4 a.m. <laughs> just making sure they get this information. Okay. Also being a bridge between those who are in the know and those who don't have access to those resources. I've had mm-hmm. friends who've gotten them a, a couple of them job opportunities opportunities also just letting them know they they are being heard um brilliant women oh my god so let's really? highlight that a little more let's let's yeah. highlight that a little more so that the, those who are listening can really get the world because we absolutely see your passion we see how yeah. quickly things have transpired yes. and have progressed and so you are you know you enter into the into the marketplace as a young professional and you're hit immediately with like discrimination and 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 just you know unfair treatment in the workplace and yes. so um all that Plus, you're just passion and commitment, right? To live your life's work. You decide to move by faith in the midst of the passing of, you know, someone who's very important to your in your life, your mother, right? Yeah. But she leaves you with a key that helps you to unlock a door. And that was the launch, right? That was the birth (laughs) of corporate black girl 101. So go to DC DC and you start to unlock your passion. And so you launch this company. And you start to impact locally, which is like DC, New York. Yeah. Just giving people the keys. Like, how do you navigate as a Black woman or woman of the diaspora here yeah. in the US? How do you navigate? Yeah. How do you navigate these conversations, these challenges? Yeah. And then you're like, I'm going to take a global because I understand that the problems that we have here are not limited to this proximity, but they are right. also reflective, even though maybe a little different, but reflective of the women and the people back home in Nigeria. And so yes. you took it global and yes. took it to Nigeria. And now yes. you're leading 
courses and webinars in Nigeria. And yes. so it brings to this point, you know, there's this really big push um, between U.S. Africa relations, U.S. Africa yes. trade, and U.S. Africa engagement. Where yes. President Biden recently said that he's not he's not for Africa, but with Africa, right? Really embodying this notion of <laughs> this notion of we're going to stand side to side and we're going to yes. push forward our bilateral agreements. And what with the work you're doing, how do you feel like you're adding to this as a young diaspora, you know, Nigerian American? Woman. That's a really, really good question. I think that's actually a question I should think more about even after we get off because um, <laughs> I just, you know, Nigeria, I don't want to talk about the country Nigeria, but there's some brilliant, like everywhere, but there's some geniuses that I know yeah. of, some women that are geniuses. And if I can get them opportunities mm. out here, right, yeah. some kind of connection where they can, you know, and not even just out here, because I do have um, some students who, not stu some members who are now like in different European countries. countries. So, mm -hmm. so it's like, if I can um, get some, some students to come out here and utilize their gifts or find programs, because I didn't highlight that we have a WhatsApp group, I, okay. or maybe I did, and it's right. Cor Corporate Night Jagger 101. And the beauty about this group is that, you know, I watch it like a hawk, meaning that mm -hmm. um, you can't spam it with any I'm selling this, I'm selling that. No, it's strictly and solely for job opportunities and academic opportunities and anything that'll help someone advance um, and achieve their career goals or academic goals. So sometimes you do see international opportunities Absolutely. in the state or programs or big time organizations in the states that are seeking individuals from African countries. And sometimes Nigeria is one of those countries. So just kind of, you know, Get, getting getting them those resources, giving them that exposure. I'm also, a, you know, someone who can help you if you're like, you know, I kind of need to package myself this way or package myself that way. That's where I step in. So honestly, that's what I see because honestly, uh, Africa is a gold mine. It is, absolutely. Right. The potential like, that's is. What, I'm like, the potential America, is enormous. You, you need us. Africa is a gold mine. I mean, I don't know <laughs> if you've seen, like, even from, like, the FIFA World Cup votes, I watched a documentary, they needed Africa's vote yeah. to win. You yeah. know, we, we have an abundance of resources in Africa. Absolutely. I, I mean, Absolutely. it's unfortunate that others are coming in and using up our resources. And that's because, I mean, it's it's corruption in terms of our governments not setting things up so that we can succeed. But anyway, that's another- Yeah, topic. I mean, there's, yeah, there's a lot of layers. I mean, I think there's a lot of layers. Um, many of us who are, you know, in the space who analyze yeah. and look at daily, but I think to focus in on the great work that you're doing specifically, Rita, you know, when I think about the work you're doing, I think you really fall under what we call human capacity building. Yeah. And so there is a gap between potential and then possibility and that gap, I think, is where you fit in in helping people with the resources because many times people don't even know they have the potential to produce the results that others are looking for. Right. Um, and so we need we need um, people to create that catalytic effect, like you, to go in and train them around branding, train them around presentation, there train you them go, around girl. speaking. So you good. know, train them around <laughs> um, <laughs> how to navigate. <laughs> Yeah, and navigate, you know, personal, professional. And I, it's so important um, with this push. The, the work that I like to do and highlight specifically is on civil servants like you and I who are yeah. taking our own gifts and using it to unlock doors for those who are to come. And so I love the work that you're doing. And I think that there are a lot of people who are interested, a lot of organizations, international organizations that are interested yeah. in capacity building. Yes. Um, because what you find, what I have found in the marketplace is that many of these folks who go into like yourself who go into the workspace corporate workspace they gain some skills and then they become entrepreneurs and they become yes. owners of their own organizations like yourself and entities yes. And, yes. And, and, I, and I truly believe that like, true freedom and ownership comes with your ability to really produce and create your own um and so so exciting Rita I you know for those who are listening who are like I need that support I need the kind of resource can you name maybe your top three resources or things Ooh. to do that they should consider or tap into and then tell us how yeah. they can connect with you okay so first I want to put out um because I I'm, I'm I need to state that I just published my first book wow um, yes that's a big 
It yes. Changes. It's called yeah. Work by Faith. It's a 30 wow. day career devotional and it focuses and highlights the importance of wow. utilizing spiritual growth to achieve career success. So the Amazing. book covers everything from, I'm, it's basically biblical scripture, scriptures from the book of Matthew because that's what helped me get through my last uh, tragic unemployment situation. Wow. Um, and I, this business helped, I, there was a, I, I utilized my spiritual growth and gifts to bounce back up. It yeah. tackles, um, you know, drama in the workplace, toxicity, career mm-hmm. transition, being laid off. And each devotional has a gospel song. So I'm sure that Amazing. anyone will read it and relate to it. Um, and so uh, I'm bringing that up because my approach in terms of, you know, and I want to respond to what you're saying is you have to first kind of self-assess not kind of, you have to self-assess. That's where that spiritual growth comes into place. And that's why I'm labeling it spiritual growth um, because I don't know what spiritual growth is for you or, you know, but it means looking deep within, um, intrinsically beyond the surface, beyond the surface, excuse me. And so you need to self-assess in order to gain clarity on what your strengths are, your skills are, um, what kind of lifestyle are you seeking? Um, what kind of lifestyle you desire? Is it flexibility? Because once you self self assess, really, you really be gi- be giving yourself the opportunity to understand who am I? What do I want? After you do that, that is when you can now go out and um, you know work on a career brand. Well, career branding. Mm. Actually, I always say career mapping first. So after you self assess, then you should career map. Um, A lot of people are in strategic and career mapping is not just for getting a job, but it can also be for a particular goal. It can be for getting a certain degree or gaining a certain skill set. And I hold career mapping classes as well. Um, And then you can focus on career branding. And that's where the resume comes into play. The positioning yourself as an expert, what you look like on LinkedIn, your your, um, knowing the jargon for your industry um that's right what your you know just how you present yourself online how to pitch yourself at a networking event so those are the three things you self-assess you career map and then you career brand um oh, and so um for for i drop so many videos all the time on instagram um you can follow me at corporate black girl 101 but my actual page is rita aluchi ob um, so you can follow me there as well. Either one, I'm still going to be in your face. Um, <laughs> both pages. And I drop gems all the time. And for those who, you know, the reason why I use this approach is because I feel like we're in a society where we only focus on the application material needed to achieve your career goals, but we don't focus on what's needed within, right? We don't um, dive deep. And I feel like this is where we overlook the importance of healing from that trauma you've experienced in previous yeah. places of work, that self-doubt that you, those are the things that can hinder you from taking that next step until yeah. that is resolved, until that is dealt with, until that is acknowledged, then you'll be able to clearly, not blindly move forward. And it is possible to achieve uh, to achieve career goals that allow you to utilize your, your, your gifts and still live a happy and peaceful life. So for yes. me, ultimate goal is peace. It's all about cultivating peace throughout your career journey. Yes. We have one life to live. Right? You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, Rita, thank you so much. You have shared some major transformational gems that I think You're for welcome. those who are listening and those who are just looking to just you know, just posture themselves for their next season of their life. You know, something I say often, and I live by this, this is my motto. I give it to everyone and anyone. I don't care in what context I have to speak. Um, something God gave me, even in my journey from unemployed to employer, Come and on. that is simply to live at the level of your consciousness and never mm-hmm. at the level of your circumstance. And so everything that you've shared, everything you said is all about living into the possibility that they want to create for themselves yes. and not deducing, you know, their capability to what's happening right there and then. And so if you want yes. to impact locally and build globally, listen, Rita just shared some amazing <laughs> gems. Follow yes. her, connect with her, um, because you really need that kind of voice, you know, respective of how well you're doing in that season of your life. These are just principles that when you practice 
will always promote that peace and that prosperity yes. that is um, due to all of us. So Rita, thank you so thank much. Thank you for having me. I so appreciate you. And I'm sure we'll be in touch again when I invite you to our next podcast. Where well, there you have it. Impacting locally and building globally looks different for so many different people. In that past example, it was a service-based business that's growing here in the US and in Africa. And she's using WhatsApp to grow her organization and her community and her membership. And you can too. If you have any questions on how to get started, click on the links in the caption to connect with me and the work that we're doing at the VGC Group to help you adopt digitalization to impact locally and build globally. I'm W. Eda Cruz. Thanks for listening.